And I heard you on a podcast and you said something that was really interesting and it kind of tags on to what you were just saying. You said that society is fucked, but humanity is okay. And I wonder, can you, in light of everything that you just said, how do you reason that? Or are you an optimist? Well, well, I I am an optimist and it's like increasingly comedic to be optimistic in this world. But like, I, I really am naturally an optimist. And I mean, probably because I'm a comedian and I can laugh with anybody, you know, and I see different kinds of people. And it's not like, you know, um, I'm not talking about black and brown audiences. I'm talking about white guys whose wives took them to my shows and they're cracking up and they're like, you know, they're not saying this or even necessarily thinking this language, but like their vibe is like, I can't believe this bitch. You know, it's, <laughs> like, it's just so I like the optimism I get to have from that is like, damn, it's a feels like a privilege. And so for a long time, I like, I, I tried to reason it in my mind, reconcile it by thinking that this, as Bell Hooks calls it, imperialist, white supremacist, capitalist patriarchy is something different than humanity. You know, it's something separate and alien, but it is born out of our humanity. Like the way that we are, this comes from humanity. It's not from some outside species or whatever. And you know, like this thing lately that people are talking about, they're like, we live in a simulation. We live in a simulation. And I get how that could be because the lines of reality are systematically being blurred by a very, very few individuals who hold the majority of hoard the majority of wealth. Yes, I can see, I can definitely understand why this conversation is coming up. But I think, again, reality is my jam. I think the, um, the truer thing is that society can be organized in many ways. We're organized in this one way to protect and profit a very few individuals. And it doesn't have to be that way. We could, um, our our society could be, you know, America could be newly organized uh, around recognizing true American history and reconciling that with infrastructure. Like there could be so many ways that we, I've been, I've been thinking like trees. We could just have a whole society organized around protecting trees. We'd all benefit from that. (laughs) Right. But it's, it's right. And we'd be like, fucking chilling around tr- trees everyone would be <laughs> relaxed and happy and in the, horny in the, sh- would, in the shade like, <laughs> in the shade like you know trees on top of buildings so that like we, we could solve the climate crisis we could solve humanity all, but it's just not that way at this point but like clearly young people who are youngish people i mean we're young the three of us we're not the youngest you know in the room like we used to be but it's like we're the generation that's that are the adults. And clearly the older generation is like struggling to let go of that. I mean, like, oh my gosh, the presidential race and like the yeah. representation in government is so off. It doesn't look the way the population looks. But like this, again, this, the issue of um, uh, Israel's war on Palestine keeps like unfolding so many different layers that like young people are not, I'll say, I'll say it again, like Gen Z millennials are no longer cool with genocide being in the periphery of frame while they do their thing. Like they're really not the majority of Americans. And I'm not saying uh, Gen X and baby boomers don't care either. I think the majority of Americans think this is a genocide and want it to stop. Like, it's just, it's, the, it's a really ugly transition I, I I don't I don't even know if it's a choice or compulsion or out of anxiety, but I have faith that we're going to figure it out. But it's definitely ugly, and unfortunately, people die or are murdered along the way in that change. But that's how it's been as as since this system has begun. However, long ago, ten thousand years, if you want to look at it that way, or five hundred years ago, if you want to look at it that way, where you know progress has occurred, but it's like ugly and bloody along the way how can we minimize that is a is something i'm interested in you know organizing around but um hence like our presidential ticket i'm like there is a less violent yeah. less murderous path here it's not it is not hot oh <laughs> my god is it unsexy but it is less um there's less like fire and murder and bloodshed to be happened to happen along it. So like reality and like rooting myself in reality uh, gives me hope too. Another thing with AI, 
I just did this like Wall Street Journal conference the other night and they, uh, a couple weeks ago, and there was like a chat GPT answer in the voice of Alana Glazer. And this shit was so cheesy. It was so corny. And I'm like, good one, bitch. Like, uh, little, do, little do you know, I keep evolving and keep getting deeper and wider and higher and better. Like, you can't even chase this. And everybody's like, yeah, but it's pretty good. It's pretty good. You know, people will say about AI, like, you just wait and see. The internet used to be like really dumb in the beginning. But I'm like, it's still not smarter than people. It's still about the way humans use it. Mm-hmm. And I just, I, I do have faith. I guess this is not a choiceful thing, but I do have faith that people like smell authenticity from each other. Smart people at least can't be fooled yeah. out yeah. of their humanity. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. I love that. 